Okay, we're live. We're back. We're happy to be with uh, Derwin Leva. He's an artist and a sculptor, a painter and a sculptor. This is in our series called um, Profiles in Paradise. And we consider Derwin a profile we need, we need to uh, <laughs> examine. Welcome to the show, Derwin. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a We're going to call this show Meeting Derwin Leva, okay? Okay, we that wanna sounds meet good. You. We want to understand how you operate and all that. So uh, you appeared originally on Hispanic Hawaii yes. uh, with uh, Richard um, Concepcion. Concepcion. And um, it was in, in the notion, I suppose, is that you were Hispanic. But that's really not the point. <laughs> but where are you from, anyway? I'm from Cuba. OK. Mm, Cuba. Cuba, Cuba is getting drawn into the whole conversation about uh, Venezuela now. Yes, yeah, not so indeed. Good. Um, anyway, so um, you came to this country before you studied art or after you studied art? Uh, I came when I was 15 years old. I was painting all my life. But when I came here, uh, actually, when I moved to Hawaii, that's when I started I, uh, studying art more. Uh, I went to uh, UH Manoa, and that's when I got my uh, bachelor's in, I was doing my bachelor's in painting, and then I changed my major to do my BFA in sculpture. And uh, that was recently, last year, that I graduated from UH Manoa. Ah. So, um, which, which is your favorite, actually, Derwin? My favorite... Sculpture or painting? Uh, uh, I know that's a hard, uh, that's a hard question. question. <laughs> yes, it is a hard question. Because uh, normally my favorite is the last one that I do. Because I'm in love with all my paintings and a sculpture. And then when I get to do a new one, and I start working on it, then I fell in love again with that one. And, and, and I just get into it. And <laughs> once I finish, then that's my favorite. I just look at it, and I just look at it. Until I onto my next project. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm enjoying this so much, and I'm so glad you came down. and And we have some of your art, and uh, I really like your stuff. And I want to go through it. Okay. And I'd like you to tell us about you know what the what the influences were, what you know what the experience was in creating the art. So we'll just go through a bunch of them that we have from you. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's start with number one. What is that, Derwin? That <laughs> <laughs> uh, culture is called musical glass. And the idea, I really enjoyed making that piece because what I did, I picked up a bunch of uh, glass that was trash, pretty much. Uh, so I recycle all the glass. And then I start cutting all the pieces and make it. But I want to make it into, uh, with a sheet of glass, I want to make it something three-dimensional. Because normally when you do uh, glass and, and you're using the sheet, uh, a lot of the time you just, it's kind of like flat. So the idea behind this, it was kind of like experiment, was to, to do like a three-dimensional piece uh, with a sheet glass. And um, I was very happy with the result. I really enjoyed how it came out. Uh, and then as a reference, I, I wanted to make it kind of like cubism. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the work that I do has, uh, you can see a lot of cubism yeah, in, yeah. In, into it. Well, I, I, see, uh, I see whimsical in it. I see fun. I see, um, you know, wrap your sense of humor around this one. Um, did you intend that? Yes, definitely. I was trying to get that vibe of music and colors and life and good things that music bring to your life. That was the idea behind this piece. Uh -huh. And that's what people, you know, what I want people to get out of it. When you look at it, then you feel all that that you just described. Why do I feel that music is an important part of your thought process, is it? It is. Um, the reason for that is like I always listen to music when I'm making my work ah. all the time. I mean, I have to have music all the time when yeah. I listen to it. But not only that, when I was uh, in Cuba, growing up in Cuba, we always use music as a way, as a way kind of like to escape from the daily life, uh -huh. uh, necessity and things that happen uh, when you live over there. So music was in a way kind of like to forget everything else and then just enjoy life. And that's what we always were looking for. Uh, on the weekends to go out, to listen to music every time, every opportunity we have. So definitely music is very important in my life and in my work. I wish I had grown up in Cuba too. Yeah? <laughs> so when you listen to the music then in Cuba and now, what kind of music are you listening to? <sighs> Mostly I listen to Cuban music, uh -huh. but I do listen to all kinds. Uh, I mean, I like uh, just music in general. Uh -huh. So a lot of the time I change a little bit. 
Uh, I, I listened to music from the 80s, uh, 70s, old music, <laughs> and then a lot of Hispanic music. Would you say that the, you know, the, um, the instrument you just showed us, let me go back to that for a minute, um, that guitar is, has got influence from Cuba, from you know, your Hispanic um, uh, childhood? Um, does it have influence from, does it have influence from, I want to ask you this with a lot of pieces, um, Picasso, the Cubism, I mean, w what's, what's in there? What's in there as far as your concern? Definitely has some influence from Cuba because the guitar is something that is very popular over there. Mm. Uh, people use guitars all the time. I remember going to the beach and people just sit on the beach and start playing the guitar and just people come and start dancing. And, yeah. um, it's a very popular instrument. And uh, so I like guitars. Not only... Uh, for the music, I like the shape of the guitars. Um, it's something about it that it, it gets you, my you attention. You change the shape. You, uh, you do music, musical instruments in every which way. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I like to play with the instruments and, and then kind of like come with my own uh, interpretation of the instrument, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, depending what uh, media I'm using. Uh, yeah. This one is glass. Uh, like I say, before it was a challenge. Doing the glass was something that I never done before. Uh, and then uh, cubism, uh, I use as a reference, yes, uh, to make this piece, uh, trying to uh, to make it in a way where it was uh, happy and colorful, but different um, with this this piece. Well, I, I get the feeling actually, Joey. You tell me if I'm right or wrong, but you're also sculpting the music itself, and you're sculpting the experience of people listening to the music. In other words, this isn't just a guitar, it's a musical experience. And if you look at it carefully, if I do, I will, I will feel the music as well as the guitar. No? Uh, that's the intention. You know, I'm very happy that you feel that way because that's the intention behind the piece. I, I want people to feel the music when they look at it. Definitely. Lovely. Let's go to the next piece. I'm, I'm really having a good time here today. <laughs> Okay, now we have a, a violin. That's a cello. Cello, um, pardon me. <laughs> yes. Um, and so, like a lot of the pieces that I do, I always try to experiment. Uh, not with the technique, but also with the material that I use. So this one here is uh, made out of uh, raw iron. Um, and then uh, it was kind of like different working with metal. And I was trying to do the cello in a way, again, that, that uh, I was thinking about the music in Cuba, but when I was uh, breaking this piece, like I broke it into pieces, uh, and I call it fragmented cello, um, I was thinking about Cuba, how um, we enjoy the music, how it's part of our life, but how the system and everything over there is so fragmented. And that kind of based on those thoughts about the fragmentation of Cuba, the system, the things that are happening over there now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it brought me to making that piece. I was like, you know, I want to make something that represents a little bit of Cuba. But at the same time, again, you know, I, I always like to highlight the, the music and the happy part of it, uh, what we enjoy the most. It's a different kind of music. If I look at the, the fragmented cello yes. um, sculpture, I, I, I feel uh, classical. I feel there's a classicism in that. And I feel that um, uh, it's, um, people are working at it, uh, and they're finding new interpretations for the classical cello music, uh, and they're, you know, they're busting through a generation gap. That's my reaction, yeah? Yeah, it, it, it's definitely a different feeling from looking at this piece you know, with a glass. Uh, when you compare both of them, the glass is so sensitive, and, and this one is like, uh, something hard and conservative, rough, exactly and classical, and <laughs> definitely. So it's, it's definitely, uh, definitely a different feeling from one piece to the other one. How big are these pieces, by the way? Is that cello as big as a cello? Uh, not that big, but it's about, I would say, close to four feet. So well, it's a pretty big piece. It'll yeah, occupy yeah, a corner yeah. of the room. Yes, sure, it's yeah. a pretty big piece. Uh, the other piece is about, I would say, maybe like two feet and a half. Uh, so, um, well, the guitar is small. Uh, yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> and, you know, I, I don't want to do a life size because then it's, it's 
pretty big space uh, yeah. to put it in the house or someplace else. Yeah. And it's just a representation. Yeah. Um, maybe one day I'll do a real life one. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> I think looking at your musical sculptures probably helps us understand your paintings. And is the next one a painting or another sculpture? Ah, ah, now this one, I really like this one. Is this wood? No, that's bronze casting. Cast bronze, yes. whoa. It's really interesting the way it wraps <laughs> around. What are you trying to tell us with this? Uh, that was actually a very difficult piece to make. I'm sure. And, uh, I, I, I like to challenge myself, so I, I, before this piece, I already done several bronze casting pieces, and I wanted something that was difficult, and, um, and, I, found it. and I tried to do this, uh, <laughs> this piece, uh, which was, was quite a challenge to make, uh, just because the composition and then putting everything together and making sure that it didn't, uh, you use wax when you're making the piece before you do the casting, and just uh, making that piece and making sure that it didn't uh, fall apart. It was kind of hard uh, putting everything together. Is it together uh, now? I mean, if, I, yes. if I push it, it's not going to no, fall no, apart. No, no, no. Now it's else. made out of bronze, so okay. now <laughs> it's already cast yeah. into bronze, so now it's, uh, it's good. What I get out of that is if I look through it, you know, it's just transparent in its own mm. way, right? And I can look into the belly of, it's a cello, yeah? Uh, that one is a violin. Oh, that's violin. Okay, that yes. would, be, that would that, be smaller than the cello. That one is it's a small oh, okay. piece. Oh, that's yes. even more interesting. <laughs> so if I look into the violin, I, I can see the music. I can feel the music. It gives me a window into the, the, the chamber that creates the music in the violin. Uh, do you intend that? When I uh, made this piece, uh, I was thinking about normally when you do paintings and you represent the music and then... Uh, a lot of time you see in the artwork, uh, the musical instrument, and then you see the music coming out of it, and then people do like lines just flowing around the music around the instrument. So I was trying to represent that with this piece. I was thinking, how can I make the violin for the music to come out in the same way, but rather than just represent the actual music, yeah. uh, what I did was that I create that shape that you see there um, with the violin, and that was uh, my way of making the music kind of like flow around the violin, and that was the idea behind it. You know, if I had that in my house, I would, I would put it prominently, but I would play, as you do when you create these works, I would play violin music. <laughs> <laughs> so that, it, you know, there'd be a connection between the work and the music, and it would almost appear that the music is coming out of the work. <laughs> I, I do listen to classic music from time to, like I say, I, 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 the type of music that I listen is, is very wide. And uh, all from classic music to uh, uh, Hispanics or uh, a lot of all classic Americans music, uh, country music. I mean, I listen to every type of music. So uh, definitely uh, classic music is a big influence, as you can yeah, see as yeah. well, in my work. You're trying to memorialize the music or at least your incorporation of the music into your, into your thought process. Let's go to the next one. <clears throat> Ah, okay, now there's a connection between the sculpt sculpture and the street scene. This is a good example of so many pieces that you've done like this. There's a Hispanic strain for sure, a European strain, if you will. There's a, a Cubism, there's a Picasso in here. Um, and it is really, really engaging because you are on the street. It's almost like you're touching the parts of the street. You're walking down the street. You feel it around you. That's my reaction. But tell me what you thought when you put it together. Uh, this painting is called uh, Musical City. And the idea behind that was uh, for you to feel that way when you walk in the street. Uh, the idea behind was Cuba. And there is a very, uh, you see a lot of photos of Cuba, the capital, uh, where you can see kind of like similar scenes to this painting. And the idea was that when you are there, music is everywhere, and you can feel it all over the city. And that was my idea behind this painting. I wanted you to see that the music is incorporated in the architecture, on the streets, um, everywhere you go, uh, the music is there. And um, so I tried to incorporate that aspect into this painting with the guitar, uh, 
becoming part of the architecture and the musician in the corner blending into the uh, into the walls. Um, so that was the part uh, of what I want to portray to the viewer in this painting. You feel it as you um, as you one more time in that painting. <clears throat> you feel it, and it's the whole thing is music, and it's got that fragment fragmented style that you had um, with um, the uh, the violin. Uh, and, the, and the cello, you were the cello, the cello yeah. and the violin. Um, so it's the same kind of, it's the same kind of musical touching. So I would say my conclusion only, but see if you agree, is, is that there's always music in your work. You listen to it, you enjoy it, um, you paint by it, and you incorporate it. Yes, yes. I think it's a, I think it's a good subject because um, no matter what your background is, no matter where you come from. Uh, music is something that makes everybody happy. Uh, everybody listens to a different type, but it's still, you know, everybody always uh, looks for music uh, in a way to feel themselves yeah. happy. So I think it's a good subject for me to paint about. Yeah, and I think that's, that's a worthy point to make, is that your work, at least for me, makes me feel happy. It is this, an expression in happiness. I mean, you'd really rather have it that way than the other way. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... Uh, you know, we'll, we'll find those threads as we go forward. For now, we're going to take a short break, Erwin, okay. and then we'll come back and we'll see more of your work, and we'll see, we'll try to connect uh, how they're the same and how they're different, and how you as an artist and a sculpture are evolving in your journey. Oh, exciting. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Profiles in Paradise with Derwin Leva. Derwin Leva, he's a painter and a sculptor from originally from Cuba, but now here in Hawaii and part of our art scene. And we are so happy that he is classy, classy work. So <laughs> the happiness part, okay? Um, I, I see it. I feel happy by the, the mesh of colors and architectural forms, by the way you do the cubism and all that. Um, but... But um, how, are you, how do you achieve that? I mean, you intend to achieve it. Um, you intend to achieve it using Hispanic you know, motif, right? And Hispanic colors and Hispanic forms, right? Tell me about the experience. Uh, yes, I do intend for people to feel that way. And what I try to do is just a combination of uh, things that I experience and uh, the culture that I live. And, I put it in a way that people, that I can bring people into the painting. Um, the same, the, the colors that I use, the forms, um, a lot of the techniques that I have learned through years of uh, painting and doing a sculptures. Uh, I try to bring all that together and put it in a way where I can get the, the viewer into the painting and uh, make them think and make them uh, analyze what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and people react in a positive way to this. People like it and people enjoy doing this. You use oils, acrylic, what? I have used acrylic in the past. Um, now a lot of these paintings that I'm doing is oil. Uh, but I, I experiment with a lot of uh, different medias. I use watercolor, oil pastels, oh, pastels. Uh, I do drawings. So I try to use 
all different type of media. Have there been artists in your family? I mean, is this, is this a, a DNA thing? No, no, no. <laughs> this is something that I uh, like to do yeah, okay, myself yeah. and, uh, you know. So what about the Hawaiian influence? You know, you went to school here, you, you really started seriously painting here, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, what influence, if any, is there from your Hawaii experience? I do, uh, actually I've done a lot of Hawaiian paintings. I have a lot of uh, 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 Hawaiian painting. I, uh, when I started here, uh, my early paintings mostly were all Hawaiians. Uh, I was doing Hawaiian uh, painting for a long time. And then uh, I decided that I needed to do some of uh, the work related to Cuba and the music. Uh, but definitely Hawaii has a, had a big influence on the work that I have done. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any photos to... If uh, I had to, to guess, I would guess that your Hawaiian paintings look a little bit like Gauguin. Am I right? Uh, you can correct me. I'm, no, uh, you, you will be uh, surprised. Uh, they're still a little different. They're, they're, I would say they're different. I tried to incorporate the same style. Uh, was not a uh, was a little abstract um, in the way that I made uh, like the composition and things uh -huh. like that. Um, but I tried to resemble a lot of the classic uh, paintings, all paintings from Hawaii, uh, in a more contemporary way. Uh -huh. uh, that's what I was trying yeah. to do with my work. Um, yeah. Put the creativity on it, yeah. Yes. Well, next time you come back, I, I want to look we at can, your Hawaiian next paintings. Next time we can right? bring a lot of the Hawaiian painting, and then we can talk about all the Hawaiian work. <laughs> right on. Let's go to the next one and see what that one looks like. Ah, to talk about color. Um, this is really a study in color. It's your color, Derwin. Yes. This is a statement of how you feel about color, right? Uh, definitely. <laughs> and this is... Um, this painting is uh, um, one of my early paintings. Uh, when I started doing this type of work, uh, this was uh, probably, um, I think it was like the third painting that I did this, uh, with this style. And uh, it was just about colors, mainly. This, this painting was uh, a representation of colors. And I was inspired by the carnivals in uh, Venice uh, with the mass and the colors. and. Uh, that's what I, you know, I always so attracted to the colors and uh, I want to represent that in this painting. Yeah. It's also the forms. Can we go back for a second? <clears throat> Those forms, although they're much more, they're much more, uh, what's the word, um, fluid than Paul Clay, uh, the, the combination of, uh, you know, unusual um, and uh, creative forms, the juxtaposition of the forms, and the color around the forms, it, re it does remind me distantly of Paul Clay. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I would say some of the, the work may have some similarity. Um, for me, uh, you know, I, I think every painting that I do is kind of like a learning step. Uh, and uh, this one uh, specifically, um, was I was trying to work in the abstract aspect of it. I wanted to represent, you know, the idea, but I wanted the people to work hard to find it. Like, I mean, I was trying to use a lot of the colors and I wanted people to look at it and then spend time looking for the forms and things like that. Yes. Um, because it's kind of hard to see first. I mean, you see a lot of the colors, but you have to actually take a yes. minute or two to be able to uh, see the forms. So I was just kind of like trying to to work in that aspect of abstraction. Uh -huh. um, Would you say that's the direction you're going toward abstraction? Um, I mean, you're already abstract, but... Yes, but. I, you know, it's part of abstraction. I mean, abstraction is part of my work, definitely. Um, and, I, uh, and I enjoy, I enjoy that uh, some of the work you cannot see it right away. You have to look into it. I think that uh, made the, the painting interesting mm -hmm. because... Uh, you know, a lot of the time when you do something very realistic, uh, very uh, something that looks like a photograph, a lot of the people look at it and they appreciate the, uh, the technique that, and the effort that you put into doing this type of work. But because we are so saturated with image, uh, I mean, we already look at it and we recognize it immediately. So we, we kind of like discard that work. Um, I mean, we recognize it that it's uh, very difficult to do. But then when you do something that is, uh, has some abstraction to it, and people have to 
take a minute to look into it and trying to uh, decide what the painting you know is about, what the work of behind the the lines. Yes, uh, there's so much more complex, so yes. much more to, to understand with abstraction. That's uh, that's what I get out of that type of work. I think people react to that a little different. So uh, definitely, I have a lot of abstraction into my work. Let's look at another piece. I want to see as many as we can now. Okay, now you've toned down the color here. And you look more like, more like Picasso, I'm sorry. That's... Yes, <laughs> yes. And um, again, every piece that I do is an experiment to me. And this one, uh, because I did so many colors on the other one, yeah. uh, I tried to limit myself, the palette, on this painting. And I was like, I wanted to do something monochromatic, something that didn't have that which was very difficult for me because I enjoy colors so much, but I also like the challenge and I like to do things that are different. And I decided to do this painting using only black, white, and a few other colors, but very, very minimal, very monochromatic. Yeah. And I really enjoy it. I mean, when I finished this painting, I was uh, in love with it. I mean, it was oh. so different from the Previous painting. It's a knockout. So you have the musical instrument, you have the street, you have the those tactile bricks there in the street. You have this whole commotion going on on the left side, and it's up to the viewer to try to figure out what that all is. Yes. <laughs> and and he has to deal with it in order to go down the street. You have to figure it out to see what's beyond. I really like this one a lot. Let's go to the next one. Ah, now this is sort of in the middle of those two, isn't yes. it? <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, this painting is called Musical Lost, and, and the, the idea was uh, about Cuba and uh, how the music is part of the street and things like that. But I wanted to uh, now be so monochromatic on this painting, but I wanted to have, uh, like you say, in the middle. I wanted to bring some of the colors, but also uh, thinking about Cuba, how the cities uh, you go to. Uh, all part of the city, Havana, or some of the other uh, cities, the, it's so destroyed. Um, a lot of the colors are so monochromatic because the uh, architecture is all it's and faded. The, uh, yeah. It's faded. Yeah. They hadn't been, you know, there is no renovation, there is no new paint. Uh, so everything looks uh, all. But it but, speaks of, of a, uh, a grandeur uh, years ago. Yes, yeah. I, I mean, you see these, and I mean, and, and you can still enjoy the architecture, you enjoy the. Uh, the places and the history behind that's a lot of these uh, uh, colors faded bring the history you know you can see the history through those uh, walls fading um, and I want to bring some of that into this painting I wanted to have uh, some of the music some of the color but at the same time I did I want to have some of that all things oh, that you can find through the city. It's really multi-dimensional. <laughs> we, we only have a minute left, so I'd like to go through the rest of them real quick, and you can just uh, tell us uh, the names and what all the right. subject is. Uh, this one, the celebration, of uh, the background is the cathedral in Havana, and um, I was inspired by the, I, I want the musicians to uh, be celebrating in front of the cathedral. And uh, I mean, this painting we can talk uh, for a long time. It yeah, has a lot of meaning behind. I want you to come back. We can spend a half definitely. An hour on we this can, one. Uh, you know. Okay. Next. Ah. Um, this one is called Cafe Metal, and uh, it's uh, the 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 church behind is uh, or the cathedral behind. Actually, it's a cathedral uh, from the city where I'm from, Santa Clara, and I was inspired by that. I always walk by that cathedral all the time. And I never walk in. And uh, you know, looking behind, looking back, I I, I always want to go inside that uh, that cathedral. Uh, I think I only went like maybe once or twice. Um, so I want to kind of like bring it in and uh, into my painting memories that I have uh, from my sure, childhood. Sure, sure. And, but there's a figure there. Yes, there is a woman sitting on the table with a wine and uh, the cross. So. Um, a lot of the subject behind is... Uh, There's an irony there, isn't it? Yes, it is. The cathedral uh, and there's yes, a woman that's who looks a, like she's a good time. Yes, that's <laughs> a, you know, and I want to... Uh, and those are things that are part of the Cuban life right now, things that are happening. Uh, so I want to bring it uh, kind of to lie. That is, uh, that's the, 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 the idea these, behind These are paintings it. that you have to study. Okay, what's next? 
we'll whip through the last few of them, and I, I, I do want to see them all, all the ones we have anyway. <laughs> so, now there's another woman here, no? Yes, um, and this one is called the Blue Guitar, and uh, it's a woman on the street sitting, uh, playing a guitar, and uh, I use as a reference the sculpture uh, musical glass, the one that we talked about before, and I use that uh, into the painting. Uh, now, uh, on the walls I draw uh, Patria o Muerte, which is something that is used uh, as a way of propaganda Fidel Castro used to use in his speech, uh, which means either fatherland or, or death, pretty much. And, uh, but then on the painting uh, on the top, I wrote a 90 uh, end. Uh, kinda, I used that as an address for the house on the painting, but I was referring to Miami, which is 90 miles north of Cuba. <laughs> uh, All kinds uh, of symbolism. Uh, yes, <laughs> and, and, you know, and I used that as a way Kind of like a third auction because uh, you know in, in Cuba is a uh, fatherland or death, but then the third auction is you know ninety miles north uh, mm -hmm. is Miami, which is freedom, and uh, that's that's the it's idea amazing. behind it. And then that woman is just on the street sitting and kind of you know playing and forgetting about all the things that are happening around her. I've noticed that in each one of these paintings, there's uh, there's, there's layers. Of a possibility, and there's a story, and there's something worth studying yes, and learning from. A... Let's go to the next one. Oh, yeah. talk about musical instruments. <laughs> this is a beautiful musical instrument. Now, is that, that, that's not a violin. Is that's it? a cello. That's that's the, a, back, yeah. back to the cello. Yes. Uh, um, how do you do that? The color on the, <laughs> and the depth of the color is beautiful. Thanks. Uh, this one is called a cello player. And uh, I saw a photo of this guy in Cuba walking around with a big cello on his shoulder. And I was thinking, like, wow, you know, that cello is huge, and he's probably, whatever he goes from place to place, he has to carry it. You know, there is no, he doesn't have a car, doesn't have anything, he has to carry that thing to go play from one place to another. He must be tired. So I was like, I'm thinking, like, he, he got to rest. So, I, uh, you know, the idea of the painting was him sitting down, resting. You, you, and, you uh, caught uh, the moment. Uh, you know, I was <laughs> like, he got to sit down. So, I, uh, you know, and then I, I, I painted a big cello uh, resting against the wall. But then the graffiti behind uh, CDR and Viva La, Music, La Musica and No Castro, uh, you know, it's obvious the, uh, my intentions there. You know, everybody wants music to to be part of their life. Castro is, you know, not a good choice. Yeah, a good and choice. then uh, uh, CDR is uh, something is a uh, committee to defend the revolution. is something that in Cuba you see everywhere is on the walls. And this, uh, they use it as a propaganda to control the... There's so the, much here. Yes. It's loaded with messages. It is. Every painting that I do always have a lot of message it's behind beautiful. it. There you is always a story. It, enjoy it, know yes. about it, be able to explain it to other people. Let's go to the last one, last picture. Ah. Ah, uh, now that's interesting. Is a person sort of stooped over? What is happening here? Uh, it's called uh, La Violinista. Um, um, and it's a woman playing the violin. Uh, a lot of the paintings that I did before uh, normally are on the street, people uh, outside, outdoors. So I want to do this painting indoor. I want to uh, show some of the architecture of Cuba, but like inside the house. But I also want to bring some of the outside still. That's what I, um, and this uh, specific painting is based uh, of a city in Cuba that is called Trinidad. And it's a, I mean, it's a classic uh, city. Everything, the architecture, everything is colonial. Um, from, I mean, it's from 500 years ago, a very old city. And uh, I want to bring some of that into my painting. Uh, it's kind of hard to see on the photo, but like uh, on the book, and then uh, some of the other things around the painting um, has some message. Like you say, you know, I want to uh, show the music, but I also want to put some of the things that are happening in Cuba or, or to represent uh, part of the Cuban life uh, yeah. into the painting. What would the Cuban uh, market, the Cuban viewer, the Cuban uh, person uh, want to have your paintings, or would he be afraid? Oh, no, they will. Uh, actually, uh, I got an excellent reaction from people like uh, a lot of the Cubans, when they see the painting, they understand a lot of the message. I don't have to explain it. As soon as they see it, you see that their face just, uh, you know, uh, you see everybody smiling and, and laughing about it because they can understand the message. They know exactly uh, what all those symbols and all those uh, yeah. words mean. Beyond um, the words, beyond the symbols, beyond the historical layer of these paintings, though, 
there is a universality about them. Universality of music, universality of form and shape, of color, uh, a universality of happiness. Uh, there's a certain optimistic aspect to them, and I really enjoy every single one. And you have to come back, Darwin, to come <laughs> back and show us your Hawaiian collection. Okay, you have to we'll come do back that. and tell us more about you know how you establish these layers and what messages you send you send out to the world. Thank you so much. For oh, thank that. you for having me in the show. I really enjoy. It. Great discussion. Aloha. All right. Aloha. Thanks. Hasta vienda. Hasta la. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. <laughs> <laughs> what do I know? <laughs>